My name is Melissa Samuels. I'm the Director of Alumni Programs at the Albany Alumni Association. I'm glad you could join us today for our program, Managing Emotions and Relationships at Work. Before we get started, I have just uh, two housekeeping items I wanted to mention. We are gonna be recording today's webinar and I will be sending a link out to you um, once the webinar is posted, it usually takes us a couple of days um, to get that up. Um, also, we will be doing a Q&A today at the end of the session. So if you have questions for our presenter, uh, please put them in the Q&A. Um, that will allow us to make sure that we see them. They may get a little lost in the chat. So let's get started. I'd love to introduce our presenter today, Dr. Cindy Bautista Thomas, is class of 99. She is a licensed clinical social worker. She's a master facilitator in personal and professional development. Cindy is committed to supporting people in their transformation process to live their best lives personally and professionally. She's a doctoral lecturer at Lehman College and is the co-founder of Velocity Visions. So Cindy, um, please, uh, please join us. And uh, we'd love to get started. Good afternoon, everyone. First of all, congratulations to you for saying yes to you, for being on this webinar. Probably this is your lunch hour. This is your day off. Kudos to you. I'm so excited to be here. So I uh, want to definitely thank the University at Albany for my MSW education that I received there. I was a 1994 EOP freshman, but then eventually transferred to SUNY Stony Brook, but I still uh, hold SUNY Albany so close to my heart. And so let's get started. So many of you signed up for this workshop because there was something about this topic, right? Managing emotions and relationships at work that you connected with. And so let's get started and get right into the groove of today's presentation. We don't have much time. I'm gonna put uh, two days of training into 50 minutes. Let's see how I do. So first of all, I do want to share with you that Velocity Visions Inc. is an organization that I co-founded with my partner in the healing journey, Nancy Lewis in 2017. We do host corporate training and workshops, nonprofit training and workshops. We've also worked with various schools and educational institutions. We are, are an MWBE certified organization. We are also a New York City Department of Education vendor and recently approved CE providers for LMSW and LCSW social workers in New York State. Please find us on social media. If I say something today that resonates with you, please take a picture, record it, and please tag us at Velocity Visions Inc. Uh, on all social media platforms. We are in the business of really connecting with corporations, organizations, and individuals around healing. Right. There's so much that we've experienced as a community, as a nation, as a world. Right. And we're very clear that when we tap into the healing, whatever that looks like, people are able to connect with that transformation that's needed so that they can create personal and professional impact. And as we know, if we're able to impact ourselves, then we will be more effective connecting with everybody else. So let's get started. Uh, I do want to share with you that we have a podcast called Self-Care to Success in 50 Minutes or Less, and it is on all audio platforms. Nancy and I don't like podcasts that are over 15 minutes. We're very busy. So we decided to create a podcast during the pandemic because we wanted to be able to contribute something to the world to support all of the challenges and changes that people were experiencing. So each uh, episode is NC and I sharing personal narratives around how we've incorporated different components of self-care into our lives. So we definitely want to encourage you to take a listen if you haven't already. So I like to start with some mindfulness because no matter where you are in the world, no matter what you're doing in your life right now, there's just a whole lot going on. I want to definitely um, just honor anyone who's lost anyone during this time, uh, during this very challenging, we're still in the middle of a pandemic and, and there's a lot going on. I want to give love and shout out to the families in Puerto Rico, in Dominican Republic, and in all those territories and countries where uh, this hurricane has impacted. So I'm going to invite you into a, a breathing activity so that we can get grounded and really connect with the work that we're gonna be doing together. 
So while I will be sharing some tools and information and education, I'm also going to put you to work, right? So uh, let's get started. So the invitation is if you are able to, to uh, wherever you're sitting, whether you're in a bed, uh, whether you're in a chair, that you uh, plant your feet on the ground if that's available to you. And that if it's available to you and you feel comfortable, that you either lower your gaze or close your eyes or find the focus point somewhere in front of you or in the space that you're in at this time. And I'm gonna invite you into a deep breathing exercise. And so those of you that engage in mindfulness work regularly may already be aware, you know, to do the deep breath, your, when you inhale, the invitation is that your abdomen will expand, right? And when you exhale, that your abdomen will contract. Sometimes we're breathing from here, most of the time, actually, we're breathing from up here, uh, but connecting with the deep breath has been uh, really proven to support mind, body, and soul wellness. So I'm just going to give you a little bit. I'll talk a little bit more about mindfulness later on as part of the work of really connecting with your emotions and, and being uh, fully present to all the things, all the things, all the feelings, all the emotions that show up in the workspace, right? And so at this time, the invitation is for you to close your eyes, lower your gaze, please sit up, uh, pretending maybe that there's something holding you back so that your chest is fully up. And uh, let's get started. So it's natural as you close your eyes, allowing that natural breath to go in and out of your nose, it's natural to have disruptive thoughts that are kind of showing up. It might be the list, the laundry list. It might be the shopping list that's coming to mind. Pay attention to it. Just notice it and then release it, right? Say thank you, uh, but not right now, right? And then just release it, right? Because uh, mindfulness may be uh, challenging for some people because we have just have so much on our minds. And as long as we sort of notice it and then release it, it will help us in that process of really feeling grounded. So we're, I'm gonna invite you to inhale for four counts, to suspend and hold the breath for five counts, and then exhale for six counts. The invitation is that as you're inhaling, that you think about an intention that you wanna set for the time that we're gonna be together, right? And that when you're exhaling, that you think about what's not serving you at this time and just kind of release that. So let's get started. All right. And so at this time, if you feel comfortable, you might want to put your hands on your abdomen so that you can truly feel that deep breath. And so we're going to inhale for one, two, three, four, suspend for one, two, three, four, five, and exhale for one, two, three, four, five, six. Let's just sit here for a moment, being in gratitude for being here at this space, at this time, connecting with one another, wherever you are in the world, uh, taking in this work today. And so when you're ready, I'll wiggle your toes, maybe shake your arms out so that we can connect uh, with this work today. And please put in the chat box, uh, what was that like for you? Uh, you can just put in one word, of what that mindfulness experience was like for you uh, as we move on. So what are we gonna cover today? Uh, so I'm gonna do my very best in the 50 minutes that we have uh, to just give you like a snippet. This is definitely not a comprehensive training on emotional quotient, emotional intelligence. I'm going to give you just some snippets of information and hopefully what I share with you today will be something that will inspire you to continue uh, seeking more knowledge and information about your self-awareness and how you can fully engage with all of who you are in moving forward in the work. Uh, I love that folks are sharing how the mindfulness moment was for them. And so we're gonna cover emotional intelligence. I'm gonna share the four tenets of emotional intelligence we're gonna talk about managing emotions. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about the relationships at work, right? And we're gonna dive deep into some experiential exercises. Now, of course, I can't see you. I can feel you, but I can't see you. So I hope that when I invite you into an exercise that you take full advantage of it and, and just kind of dive in, 
I'll be asking for feedback in the chat box. You know, certainly as I'm speaking, if anything comes up for you, um, please feel free to put questions because when we get to that section of our presentation, I'm really looking forward to engaging in a dialogue with you. All right, and so uh, let's talk about some guiding principles. When um, I present, I definitely uh, want folks to understand that I, I'm coming from my perspective, my opinion, my ideas. And so the hope is that you're open to these ideas. For some of you, they may be new ideas. For others of you, they may be components that you're very familiar with, right? Uh, the request also is that you be present in the moment, right? There are so many distractions uh, going on in our lives all of the time. And so just for this little time that we shared together, let's just kind of be present together. And, and also just kind of notice what comes up for you. You know, I may be sharing some stories, uh, some techniques, uh, some tools on, on emotional intelligence. And so some things might, might, brew, might uh, brew for you. And, and that's okay. So just kind of pay attention to those things. And next, just kind of be yourself. You know, I'll, I'll ask for some responses uh, to some of the exercises that we'll share together. And so hopefully you'll have... Um, the space and the ability to engage in those activities fully so that we can um, learn new knowledge about ourselves and others around us. All right, so what is emotional intelligence, right? Um, it's the ability to understand, right? We use and manage your own emotions in positive ways to relieve stress, to communicate effectively, to empathize with others, to overcome challenges and to defuse conflict. Now that is a lot, right? That definition, there's a lot in there, right? Many of us grapple with emotional intelligence, but perhaps we just never called it emotional intelligence, right? And so today we'll get to learn a little bit more about what this emotional intelligence is. Uh, at this time, I'm going to ask Melissa to please share the first poll. Uh, so I'm going to ask a question, and the invitation is that when the poll comes up, that you answer it honestly. Answer it honestly, right? The question is, I am realistic about my abilities at work, right? Uh, folks are already answering, right? Is it never? Is it rarely? Is it sometimes? Is it often? Is it always, right? Um, let's just give it a couple of seconds so that we can get as many folks as we can to answer that question. Uh, and then maybe we could go ahead and share the response. Awesome. If you didn't get to answer, don't worry. We're going to have plenty, uh, a couple of other polls for you to answer. So here we have a, a phenomenal emotional intelligent group of folks, right? The folks that really need to hear this information, they're probably not here, right? Like you're probably here representing other people because you're frustrated about what's going on at work, but those that need to be here are not here, right? And so part of uh, emotional intelligence is being in connection with where you're at, right? Assessing your skills, assessing your emotions, assessing how you engage with other people, how other people engage with you. And we'll get into those different components, but I just sort of wanted to check in and see where some of you might feel that you're at. So the folks here feel that you are realistic about your beliefs that work pretty often, right? And, and some of you, someone, a few of you said sometimes, right? And, and, and some of y'all are superstars and said always, and that's amazing. No matter where you fall in line, with uh, this response, you know, we're releasing judgment around it, right? We're releasing judgment around um, where you might lie here. And, and we're gonna go ahead and continue with our conversation. And as we move forward, things might shift in terms of how you might feel about uh, particular things, right? So let's talk about what are the uh, domain areas of emotional intelligence. So uh, a lot of the work, I've read different, um, materials on emotional intelligence. Some people like to call it emotional quotient. Uh, Daniel Goleman is, I follow a lot of his work uh, on emotional intelligence and there's been a lot of um, recent work 
in different areas. Many um, of you that may work in educational settings, they've taken a lot of the emotional intelligence work and have used it uh, in terms of the social emotional learning that a lot of educators and students are doing in schools. And so there's a lot to be said about how that work is trained, uh, how people are trained in that work, really thinking about all the ways that we move in the world. You know, when I uh, share information about emotional intelligence, I always make sure that I'm centering anti-oppressive practices, thinking about diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging, thinking about who's included, you know, what voices need to be part of the training, part of the contribution, in terms of thinking about how can we really be truly present in the workspace, right? And so emotional intelligence domain areas are areas where we can really look into sort of, you know, and there's two parts of it, right? There's, there's you, right? And thinking about, you know, uh, what could be controlled in terms of how you see yourself and self-awareness, right? Uh, Self-management, you know, where are the areas where you could sort of coordinate all the things that show up for you, right? And then there's that other piece. You know, we can control how other people behave, right? Uh, we could think about how we engage with other people and that's the social awareness piece, excuse me. And then of course, there's the relationship management, right? Many of you are here today because it's like, oh my goodness, you know, definitely wanna acknowledge uh, that we are in a period of time here in this country where we have just sort of dealt with two to three years of a lot of challenge, right? We, we're dealing with uh, COVID-19 still. We're dealing with a lot of racial inequity and unrest still, right? There, there's uh, a lot of inequities in so many realms of the world, right? So we, we're grappling with all these environmental perspectives and also like work still needs to get done, right? And so we're going to kind of focus on each of these areas. I'm gonna invite you into some um, activities. And so uh, let's continue with the work. Uh, so that, let's talk about the benefits of having a high uh, emotional intelligence. And so what's really fascinating is that there was a, a study done uh, with career builders. They did a survey where they surveyed a whole bunch of employers, right? And what they found was that 59% of employers would rather hire someone with a high EI as opposed to someone with a high IQ. And that's something to be said about that, right? That people are wanting to uh, have folks on their team that could tap into the self-awareness, that could tap into the self-management, that could tap into the social awareness, that could really tap into the relationship management, right? And so we'll we'll get into those details, but that's just something to note. You know, folks that have a high EI, you can identify and understand what you're feeling. You know, some of us grew up in communities, neighborhoods, and environments where talking about feelings was the norm. But others of us, that's something that we've sort of learned along our journey and continue to sort of learn and build on, right? Knowing how to interpret your emotions, you know, learning how to understand that sometimes anger is sadness. Sometimes anger is disappointment. Sometimes anger is uh, just being in a space of um, unable to, to move, to control things, right? And so we could definitely uh, spend time talking about just that emotion, right? But if we broke down every single emotion, we could get into all of those details. Uh, next is understanding how your emotions can impact others. Each of you could probably attest to someone in your life that when they walk into the room, they brighten up the energy in the room. That when they walk into the room, folks feel good about themselves. The energy uh, lightens up, right? People just uh, are all over good vibes, right? But we also know folks that when they walk into a room, you're walking out of the room 
right? You're looking to find a way to get away from that person because how their emotions are bringing your energy down, bringing the mood down in the space, right? And so in the same way that folks are lifting each other up with their mere presence, there are individuals that are bringing folks down with their presence, right? Uh, when you're able to regulate and manage your own emotions, you know, you're able to take control of what is needed and wanted at that time to support your overall health and wellness, right? And we'll talk a little bit about self-care. Of course, I can't have a presentation and not talk about self-care. Uh, and then lastly, recognizing, understanding, and influencing the emotions of others, right? You don't have to be a licensed clinical social worker, right? To recognize, to understand, and influence the emotions of others. Many of us may know people, or we may be those people that we are able to check in, to read a room. The moment we see that there's some shifting happen, we could come in and, and say a joke and sort of lighten up the mood, or we can really empathize with folks and, and, and get a, a sense of what their situation is about, how they're uh, understanding circumstances and um, that are going on in the environment and the community, right? And, and sometimes we can influence the emotions of others by, by sharing some kind words, by being in a space of, of making some decisions, right? And so there is a uh, benefits of having high emotional intelligence in your personal lives, but most definitely in your professional lives, especially when you're dealing with multiple personalities and, and there's so many different um, trades and, and job uh, spaces that offer support in this. Uh, but then there's also some communities and spaces that do not, right? And so we're happy to kind of talk about what that means for you. All right, so let's talk about self-awareness, right? So self-awareness is really understanding that you have strength. Yes, you do. And it's taking a moment to kind of check in on your strengths, right? And next is where you're able to identify your areas of weakness and that you can grow from your area of weakness, right? And the next step is asking for feedback from others so that you can grow in who you are as an individual, right? And so one of the tools that uh, I recommend for folks to really be able to tap in to some areas of self-awareness is journaling, right? And so journaling is something that for some people, they associate it mainly with, oh, that's people that are in therapy. Oh, I don't need that. I'm fine. I'm not suffering from any mental illness at this time, right? And my invitation is that if you don't already have a system of documenting your thoughts, your emotions, your feelings on a regular basis, that you consider doing that. And now in the age where everyone has sort of an electronic device, some people like to do the, the Vox, or voicemails to themselves where they're talking through a situation, they're talking through uh, a challenge, right? And, and sort of helping to support how are your thoughts connected to your actions, right? How are your emotions connected to your thoughts that then connect to your actions, right? And so at this time, I'm gonna invite you to write down the a continuation of a prompt that I'm gonna give you. And so the prompt is, and so I invite you to do this either on a pen and piece of paper or on your electronic device, or if you feel bold and brave, you can actually write this right into the chat box, right? So uh, the first prompt that I'm gonna give you all is, I get worried when. I get worried when. So I'm going to invite some brave souls to write into the chat box, right? Uh, I get worried when, right? Journaling is self-care, Marlene. And Heather, thank you uh, for your comments. 
All right. There are 104 people on here and I'm so excited. This makes my heart just sing right now. So Katie, thank you. I feel like I cannot meet expectations, both my own and others. Oh, y'all are doing it in this chat box. I love it. I get worried when my son wakes up in a negative space and goes to school. I get worried when the globe experiences a global pandemic and our earth and ecology is in pain and need of healing. Yes, Linda. Amy said, I get worried when I don't have control, specifically when my kids are not advocating for themselves. And there is power in healing in community. Even though I can't see y'all, I can feel the energy behind the words that you're sharing, right? Some uh, workspaces actually have communities where people share uh, practices in different ways. Uh, Auntie and I have led healing circles where we've supported organizations and communities around just sharing, like what's on your mind, what's on your heart, right? Susan says, I get worried when I feel overwhelmed and feel like I'm missing or forgetting things, right? Huge, huge. Thank you all for sharing that. And so I journal every single day, even if it's for two minutes, even when I don't have time, I wake up early, I meditate, I pray, I journal, I do some other things. And uh, even if I have five minutes and I say, I don't know what I want to write about. I woke up groggy. I ran out of Bustelo and I need to go to the supermarket, right? So just being able to sort of document your feelings and emotions is part of that connecting to that self-awareness. I get worried when we miss sight of the poetry and beauty in the world mm, and so much beauty in the world. And so we're going to shift a little bit. And so the next thank you all for sharing in this activity. I'm loving y'all so much. Uh, the next prompt is the following. What makes me happy is, what makes me happy is, when was the last time you actually sat and thought about what makes you happy, right? Dance, my daughter, Vizette. I love your daughter too. <laughs> uh, making my children happy, feeling at ease, peace in the world when I'm surrounded by my family, flowers, butterflies, family, laughter, time with my wife. Do you see how fast this chat is going when I asked about what makes you happy, right? Y'all were a little slow on the chat when I asked about what worries you. But there's something about that connection, right? Synchronicity, the complexity of life, vacation, Rick. I, I need me a vacation, Rick. Awesome. When I'm cooking and sharing food with my husband, mentoring, travel, and, and the ways in which each of you have connected with the different components of what makes you happy is powerful, powerful, right? Being in connection with uh, how you are being present is also self-awareness. Some of you may engage in contemplative practices, right? Uh, mindfulness is part of contemplative practices and it could include meditation. It could include sitting quietly and doing nothing. It could include uh, sipping on a cup of bustelo slowly, right? It could include walking in the forest, walking in the park, looking at the full moon, looking at the water. And so I'm encouraging you all to put in the chat box ways in which you practice mindfulness, right? Uh, Dina says, when I see my best friends and family living in their purpose and making a difference in the world, that's definitely what makes me happy. And that's why I do the work that I do because I know the impact uh, that it has when people are able to connect with parts of themselves that the, perhaps they've not had time to connect with and they're able to live their optimal lives. And then doing that gives others permission to do so. And that we're able to fully engage in the world with ourselves and then with each other, right? I love that, moving my body, deep breathing, and taking down notes, right? Uh, during the pandemic, I was about to lose my mind being in the house with my husband, my two kids, my mother, who was aging with Alzheimer's, right, and her various home attendants. 
And I started to uh, do yoga because my really great friend uh, was a yoga practitioner and told me about the benefits of yoga. So I couldn't just do the yoga. I ended up becoming a yoga instructor and really delving into the practices because I saw the benefits it gave me. Engaging in mindfulness practices, meditation, for me, sometimes it's two minutes a day of just sitting in quiet. Uh, for other days, it's 30 minutes, 45 minutes, maybe doing a 40-day sadhana. So however way that y'all are showing up for yourselves, uh, and being just within and connecting with yourself, going back to self is very critical to self-awareness because the number one ways in which you could really develop amazing relationships at work and, and deal with the various challenges that may occur at work is kind of checking in with you, right? And so we'll, we'll uh, talk about this next part of um, emotional intelligence. I'm absolutely loving uh, all of the comments here and this um, in this webinar. So let's talk about self-management. So I'd like for Melissa to please post uh, the next poll question. So self-management is about self-control, right? Checking into uh, whether or not you're trustworthy, your ability to adapt, your ability to innovate, right? And part of that is being able to tap into how am I doing, right? So this next question is, I acknowledge when I am in a bad mood. How many of you are able to acknowledge that? Some of you maybe never, well, uh, no one is saying never. So rarely, right? Sometimes, often, and always. And let's release judgment, right, around not being able to uh, even acknowledge when you're in a bad mood. Uh, many of you might know some folks that you could see when they're in a bad mood and you could sometimes feel it because you could feel the, the way their energy is sort of moving into spaces. And you may even say to them, hey, are you in a bad mood today? They're like, no, I'm fine. I'm fine, right? And we all know those kind of folks, right? And so... Self-management is, is being able to acknowledge when uh, what emotions are showing up and how they're showing up, right? Because we, we some of us are better than others in doing that. Um, Marlene says, acknowledging the mood helps to release that energy. Absolutely, absolutely. Because when you're able to name it, you're able to claim it, and then you can reframe it right? So I'm going to say that again. When you're able to name what's going on, what is this feeling that's showing up? You know, let's say the feeling is sadness, right? And then you're able to claim it and say, you know what? I am feeling sad. I'm feeling sad because my birthday is coming up and my mom is not here with me. And I noticed that Every year around my birthday, after my mother passed away, I get a little snippy with people and I get a little sad and withdrawn. And so the way that I could reframe it is maybe sharing with my friends. You know, if you notice I'm not planning anything for my birthday this year, uh, could you check in with me? Because I am in a space of sadness, right? And so I'm going to need you to kind of check in with me, right? And so we could do that. We could name it, claim it, and reframe it with many different things, right? So right now I'm gonna invite you in the chat box to think about something that you could name, right? Uh, and then tell us how you're claiming it and then uh, share with us how you're reframing that thing, right? Like I just shared about the sadness uh, and, and that's true. You know, my birthday's coming up, my mother's not here and, and there's definitely some sadness that comes up and I was, almost thinking like, no, I'm not, and I love celebrating my birthday. I'm a Libra, so I celebrate all month long, right? And so um, let's see here. So if folks would have put it in the chat box, right? Thinking about what is it that you're claiming, right? Uh, naming, what do you, how are you claiming it? And then what's the reframe? Uh, so Mary Burke says, and even telling colleagues that you're overwhelmed, absolutely. Sometimes they relate and it builds a relationship. Absolutely. And sometimes some of us think that there is a, a badge of honor to martyrdom 
that there's a badge of honor to I'm, 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 I'm doing all this work. I'm working 12 hour shifts. Uh, my weekends are consumed with all these roles that I play at my job, right? And then you don't have time for you. You don't have time for your care, uh, the people that you care about. And then ultimately you burn out and you experience compassion fatigue, right? Mary, it's your birthday month too. All right, Mary. Uh, Megan says, name it. Hi, Megan. Good to see you. Anger, claim it. Yes, I'm frustrated that my job is not what I want it to be. And I'm angry. I am feeling underutilized and my abilities are not recognized at work. The reframe. Maybe this job is not the right fit for me right now. Maybe it's not personal to me that I'm being treated like this at work. But maybe this isn't a culture fit for me. Absolutely, Megan. Absolutely. I love the way you named it, you claimed it, and you reframed it. Is it easy to name it, claim it, and reframe it? Reframe it? Absolutely not. Sometimes it's even hard to hone in on that feeling. And sometimes talking with a coworker that you could trust, talking to someone maybe in your family that you could trust someone who you care about. And even sometimes it's acknowledging that you it's time to seek professional support in the form of a therapist or in the form of a coach, right? In supporting you and figuring out what is it exactly that's going on and what might I need to do to either assess what's happening in my work environment and situation, reframing it. And sometimes the reframe is, as Megan indicated, that you might need to shift into a different career, a different place of employment, a different department, or maybe it's time to recreate, to innovate, right? Because part of the self-management is innovation. I remember I was at one job uh, and was starting to feel bored. What did I do? I started a conference. And for eight years, we did a conference. So I, I began to innovate because that was my way of managing how I was feeling around the board, right? And so Marlene says, you first have to acknowledge it for yourself and make a plan to change your current circumstances. Absolutely. And that's part of the self-management is thinking about, you know, where are you at in terms of trustworthiness? Do you even trust yourself? Let's dig in a little bit deeper. Do you even love yourself enough to check in with yourself, to make those changes, to connect with those individuals, folks, places, peoples, and things that are going to support you in thriving as opposed to just surviving, right? And so uh, let's do the poll number four so that we could check in with folks here. Poll number four. All right, let's talk about poll number four. When I am upset emotionally, I can still concentrate on the tasks I need to get done. So for some people, it's never. For some people, it's rarely. For some people, it's sometimes. For some people, it's often. And for some people, it is always, right? Thank you to that one person that said never, because there are folks out there and, and you may be a supervisor of someone who, when they are upset, they just cannot get the work done, excuse me. And sometimes when people are not getting the work done, it's about you being able to connect with them, to find out, to create a space of care, right? Self-care is great and amazing. Community care is even more fantastic. When you have a coworker that you could check in with and say, hey, how are you today? I noticed you didn't meet the deadline. Is everything all right? You good girl? We need to go out. We need some social time, right? And organizational care is, is that next step. If you're in a space where you are running an organization and can really uh, make shifts and changes to figure out what may be needed by your workforce, right? Uh, Velocity Visions has been doing a lot of work in organizations where we've been providing spaces of healing and support and supporting people around engaging in intentional self-care practices to help them thrive, 
right? And then just to survive. So let's check out the poll. So most of y'all said sometimes, right? And so check in with your coworkers, check in with yourself. What might you need when you are upset emotionally? Maybe it's mental health things. Maybe you're not taking days off and that needs to, to happen too, right? And so let's go into the next area. Now, these areas, we're not going to spend that much time in because uh, we only have 50 minutes. And um, I really wanted to, to support you in sort of how you can um, work through the things that you could control in terms of yourself, right? With self-management, it's really like that ability to, to check in. Uh, the, uh, let me do, oh, we did that, sorry. Social awareness. So let's talk about social awareness. Um, Thank you so much, Melissa. So social awareness is the ability to understand and respond to others, right? We, we talked a little bit about it uh, earlier, sort of the checking in, the having empathy, the organization awareness. Like, where do I fit within this organization? How is this organization fitting with me? And have I tapped into my values? Is this organization aligned with my goals, right? Uh, and then also, how are you engaging with cultural humility, with diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging? Where are you as it relates to power, oppression, race, and privilege within your organization? How are you feeling within yourself? And how is your organization doing around that? Because that's definitely part of just kind of checking in. How are my colleagues doing? You know, last summer was, was a challenge with, with the George Floyd and how folks were doing the racial unrest and we continue to, right? There's a lot of community violence going on. There's a lot going on for a lot of us. I can't even watch the news, y'all, without just everything. Every day, there's something. And, and some days, some people are just down in the spaces that you're in. And let's not make assumptions. Let's check in and let's ask questions, right? And so let's do uh, the very next and last area that we're going to cover. If uh, Melissa, if you could put up that last. Um, poll. This is the last poll and activity before we sort of um, get into the Q&A. I'm good at assessing other people's moods, right? Some of us are better than others, right? In, in really knowing, seeing the social cues, understanding where, oh, okay, maybe this is not a good day for me to come in with my jokes, right? As you could tell, I'm definitely that morning person, like all of the time, probably a little annoying for some coworkers, where it's like, hey, how you doing? How's everybody? How was your weekend? Uh, but then there's days when I come in, and I'm like, oh, okay, this isn't the morning for that. But you could kind of check in with people's moods. So I'm good at assessing other people's moods. So one person said never, rarely, sometimes, often, and always. So these are areas for you to check into, right? Is there a training that you could go to, a podcast you can listen to, books you can read to help support you and sort of how to check in with folks, especially when you're in a leadership role, you know, being able to tap into folks' vulnerability, being able to connect first, of course, with yourself is really critical. So let's see the outcome of this poll. The total outcome here is, uh, okay, so most of you said often. That is fantastic. That's why you're here, right? You, you said, I want some more of that information. Um, so Marlene says, I am somewhat of an empath, which serves me both professionally and personally. The same with me, Marlene. And that could definitely be one of those things that, that we got to work around, right? So relationship management is thinking about what kind of influence do you have with the folks that you work with? Um, what kind of leadership are you bringing forth, right? And you don't have to have the leadership title in order to have inspirational leadership, in order to be in a space of connection with people. And, and then how are you developing others? Are you a mentor? Do you get mentoring, right? Um, part of the, um, the challenge of relationship management is thinking about first, what level of confidence do you have within yourself? Those of you that come from communities that maybe have been historically marginalized, oppressed, experienced some racial inequities, right? Maybe in spaces uh, when you're in your employment where you're not sure if you have a voice or you might feel a little inadequate, that imposter syndrome might show up, right? Where are there areas of support? And can you create 
areas of support for yourself and others so that you can be in a space of engaging with the challenging uh, difficulties, disrupting systems of inequity and oppression along the way while you're building community, right? And, and there's ways uh, that we could do that. And there's ways to do that with love, with intentionality and support. And lastly, let's talk about self-care, right? So self-care for me is uh, my birthright, right? Uh, I am a very obnoxious about my self-care and I don't mind talking about it. And one of my areas of passion and support, because I've definitely been in spaces of burnout. I was a caregiver for my mom who had Alzheimer's, also taking care of children, a wife, being in a doctoral program, also uh, working, having a business, all of those types of things. But I'm able to do the things I do because of the way in which I move in the world around self-care. And so my encouragement for you all at this time is to put in the chat box, what are the ways that you engage in self-care as it relates to your physical health, right? And when we say physical, we're talking about how many hours of sleep are you getting? Are you stretching? Are you walking? What is your way to release physically? How are you being intentional about the things that you're consuming? Uh, maybe yoga, maybe, you know, exercises of other form. And then of course, rest, rest. I talked about that earlier. Some of us wear uh, badges of honor around overworking, right? And, and that sometimes needs to be re-examined. Thinking about emotional self-care. How are you engaging in stress management? Are you doing breathing? Uh, how is your emotional maturity? Is it time to get into therapy at this time? Is it time to think about what forgiveness looks like for family members, uh, community members, and, and otherwise? Uh, compassion and kindness, first of all, to yourself and then to others. And then the social, how are you setting boundaries with yourself, first of all, right? With your loved ones, certainly with, employers, right, with co-workers? What do support systems look like for you? What does positive social media look like for you? There are people that I've deleted from my timeline because I was so tired of the negativity they were putting out there. Uh, what is communication looking like for you? Are you making intentional time to spend with folks? And then are you asking for help? That's so essential. And then lastly, the spiritual. And when I mention the spiritual, sometimes people are like, oh, I'm not religious. I'm an atheist and, and what have you. And so my invitation is to look at spiritual at ways that you pour into your mind, body, and soul wellness. For some of us, it's time alone. For others of us, it's meditation. It could be yoga, building that connection. How do you build the connection with yourself? That's what spiritual self-care looks like right? Some of us, it's nature, it's journaling. We create sometimes sacred spaces. And for some of us, it could be religious institutions and sort of healing spaces, right? And so I invite you, I see so much in the chat. I'm going to just look at what's here. Yoga has become spiritual food as well. Prayer, listen to uplifting podcasts, exercising, dancing, walking, journaling. All right. Taking myself to lunch. Yes. I push back to others and I say no often, absolutely. Going to the movies by myself, it's an amazing time for me to completely selfish and mentally and socially rest, excellent. So at this time, I'm gonna invite you all, thank you all for sharing uh, and, and really being in connection with yourselves during this webinar today. I wanna thank you for uh, University of Albany for inviting me to share this uh, information with you today. At this time, I'm gonna request that you take your phone and go to the camera option and go ahead and click on the link and it'll take you directly to a feedback form that I would love for you to take a couple of minutes to complete so that I can uh, learn a little bit more about how this impacted you and I could also get some feedback on my presentation if there's anything I could have done differently. This is the way you could reach me, velocityvisionsinc at gmail.com, as well as the website. I will forward Melissa uh, this PowerPoint presentation as well as the link to the podcast 
and to the evaluation. So at this time, we're going to go over to the Q&A. And so, Melissa, if you could please uh, share with me um, the questions. Yeah, I'm back. I wish we had a whole other hour just for the Q&A, but we'll, uh, we'll cover what we can. Um, one of our attendees has said, it's easy to get caught up with deadlines, projects, et cetera. How can I train myself to pay more attention to how, to how others are feeling at work? Great question. Uh, my invitation is for you to think about what are your daily rituals when you get to work, right? And so what I mean by that is, are you someone that comes in and just sort of sits at the desk and right away goes at it with the emails and with everything else? Or have you developed a way of centering yourself in the space? Because part of not being able to pay attention to what's going on around you is because you yourself are not centered sometimes, right? And so um, I use a lot of reminders. I have tons of sort of notifications uh, for me to drink water, uh, affirmations mm -hmm. that pop up for myself. And so if even there's a, a pop of a reminder where you might want to set a time where you kind of stop what you're doing and kind of look around and pay attention, right? And so sometimes yeah, yeah. developing a daily ritual will support you in doing that because then that becomes part of it. Like what I had started doing is I would say to myself, uh, when I walked into a wor workspace where there were a lot of people around all the time, now it's a little bit different because I'm a full-time faculty member, uh, but I still try to do it, is I say three nice things to three different people um, at any point in time in the day. So that forces you to Love really that. pay attention mm -hmm. so that you're not like lying. Like I don't lie to people. <laughs> if your hair doesn't look nice, I'm not going to say it. it. It does, right? Um, but when uh, someone says something in a meeting that's inspiring, I'll say, you know, uh, when you said such and such, that was really inspirational. And it made me think about um, some things I hadn't thought about, right? Mm -hmm. How often do we get compliments from our coworkers? Yeah. Oh, that I love that. Three, yep. Yeah. Three nice things to three people a day that, uh, that that's easy to remember. And I think probably easy to implement. So great. Um, Celeste wants to know, what can you do when you're overwhelmed, but you have too many obligations to take a mental health day? You take that mental health day, because if you don't take it, it's going to take you. Did you hear what I said? One of the things that we've been accustomed to in this society is this idea of the deadline, right? And yes, of course, deadlines are there and they're important to, to uh, take on. And also, sometimes it's building that communication into whomever is the individual that that thing is due to, right? If you find yourself at the brink of not being able to do it, if you're not taking that time to connect with you and self-care, you will have a breakdown and then nobody gets the assignment, right? And we hear about those folks all the time uh, with the heart attacks on the job, the, the stressors that, you know, respiratory concerns, uh, mental health breakdowns, right? And so it could be that you set reminders. When you set a reminder to do something like breathing for four minutes, there is so much evidence to support that when you take time to do intentional breathing exercises, it's free. You could do it anywhere and it doesn't cost anything. It'll actually support your mind, body, soul wellness and being able to, to really delve back into it. And I encourage you to think about how are you incorporating joy and fun into your daily routine? When I feel that things are totally stressed out, what I do is I start dancing. I love to dance and to sing really loudly, right? And so I, 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 I say, it's time for a dance. Who wants to do a dance party, right? And so you, you think, and it sounds silly, but there's actually evidence to support, like many of us come from communities where this was the way that people heal. They danced, they sang in community, right? And so yeah. think about things that you could sort of shift in the ways you're moving on a daily basis that could incorporate joy, that incorporate fun. And for some of us, taking a whole day may not be possible but you can take five minutes. And if you're not giving yourself five minutes, right? What are you telling you about you? 
So that is my invitation is for you to just kind of, and releasing the judgment around that, right? We, we get to reimagine and recreate our daily routines and lives every day, right? And, uh, I think we have time for one last question. We do. And and my best friend is a dancer. Same thing. When she's stressed out, she pumps up the music. She says, I dance around the house all by myself, completely like relieves her stress. So uh, yeah, there's some evidence to that. All right. I feel like anger. No, I feel like I let anger and dislike of my workers take over my happiness. How do I not let them get to me so much? Mm, mm. So that is a, a question that has many layers. And, and I don't know you enough to get into your business. And if I had 15 minutes, there would be other questions that I would ask about even the way you ask that question, right? Because when we allow people, you know, to occupy that, that, occupy that time and space into our energy force, right? It, it's similar to what I said, you know, just a couple of seconds ago, uh, you know, when you said, you know, how do I not let them get to me, right? You know, there's a lot of questions around what is it about what they're saying that triggers something in you that allows you to get impacted by what they're saying, right? How have you created that energy force around the greatness that is you. And that might include affirmations, daily affirmations, writing out your goals, telling yourself how awesome and amazing you are. Because the truth be told is we teach people how to treat us every day in every way. And we may not even realize it, right? So I would have so many other follow-up questions because it's just one question and there's so much I don't know. <laughs> well, I think you gave you gave her some some places to start, and that's the best we can do. And I um, I know we're out of time. Um, one other person had asked about favorite resources you might have for people who want to explore some of these ideas a little bit more. I'll ask you maybe offline to share some ideas with me, and then I will share that information with everyone up. Uh, everyone else in my follow-up email. So we'll we'll see if uh, Cindy has some recommendations on maybe some other resources for folks who want to delve into this a little bit deeper. But um, I would like to thank everybody for joining us, but especially thank Cindy uh, for taking this time to share um, her perspective, um, her energy, um, her joy um, with all of us. So thank you very much, Cindy. Uh, thank you so much. And everyone have a fantastic rest of the day. All right. Take care.